Today's video is sponsored on Patreon by Daniel Stewart. Hello all, little peek behind the curtain here. Uh, whenever I make a new deck, I always record the playtest footage just in case an interesting game happens. And I couldn't be bothered commentating for this one because, well, I didn't have much high hopes for the deck in all honesty. But it's a fun casual build. If any of you want to build something like this, then it's something that you can have a bit of fun with. Obviously up against Lord Wingrace, as you've already seen, I am just going to dub over this one because uh, it does turn out to be a fun game, as you'll no doubt see. We each just play out a land. My opponent goes for a three visits on turn two, as you would expect from a lands matter deck. And I've held up Vampiric Tutor here because I'm wanting to go for the Jeweled Lotus to get the Marrow Nora out as soon as possible. So drawing into that, we drop the Jeweled Lotus and play the Mana Vault. Going to use all of the Jeweled Lotus mana and float some of the Mana Vault mana. And then we've got one floating so we can play out a Rat Colony as well. And pass the turn at that. Surprisingly, my opponent tapped out here, so we get one damage from the Mana Vault, draw into a land. Don't seem to struggle drawing into lands in this deck. There's only 35 in there, but I think I ended up taking this to 34. Going to try it at 34. Anyway, swinging in here with a Rat Colony, which is still a 3-1. And then play Bontu's Monument. That will slowly chip away at our opponent's life total, as well as making the Rat Colonies only cost a single black. Our opponent dropping a Cabal Coffers. All of their jewels just so happen to be Swamps here, so they get into a Sark and the Masterless. Make a Dragon Token with that. And then I goof up here. I'm thinking that the Marrow Nora, like I said, this is the first game I ever play with this deck. I'm thinking Marrow Nora cares about the power of the creature you're sacrificing, but it's actually just the number of rats. So I thought we were going to get multiple rats there, but Rat Colony just being converted into a 1-1, one -one, which is obviously the wrong play there. You can see why I don't normally commentate over these games, I'm just trying to learn the deck myself. So I'll draw into another Rat Colony, drop a land, and for only one mana, play the Rat Colony. Bontu's Monument drains for one. And then I think I make another mistake here, turn... Yeah, both of these in sideways at Sarkin, that has a static ability that deals damage to attacking creatures. So I lose the token immediately, so wasting two creatures there, but do manage to get rid of Sarkin thanks to the two damage from our commander. Can't block there because our stuff does have fear. So they'll need black or colourless creatures in play. Or maybe it's artifact creatures? I can't remember if fear might be artifact creatures as opposed to colourless. Anyway, Vraska comes in, minus is down, and destroys our commander. So I, uh, yeah, I think it's next turn I decide to untap the Mana Vault. Luckily get into a Cavern of Souls, and I did put Maro Nora in the bin there. Was hoping for a land off the top so we could go Patriarch's Bidding, which we obviously do here. A little bit of an early Patriarch's Bidding, but it does allow us to cheat on the commander tax. So in comes the commander again, it gives the Rat Colony Fear. And we can get straight through to the Vraska, thankfully. Turns out that this is a Super Friends build of the Lord Wingrace. So we see quite a few Planeswalkers in this deck, as you would assume. Samut the Tested now. And this is likely to deal two damage straight to a couple of the Rat Colonies. So that was one damage apiece. They can split the two damage up. Get rid of both of our Rat Colonies. There's nothing we can do about that. And decide to untap the Mana Vault here in case we get into one of our few big spells. It's just a Rat Colony, so play that for one. Keep draining our opponent with the Bontu's Monument. Marrow Nora is going to swing in at Samet. Finish that off. Already dealt with three Planeswalkers. Nissa Genesis Mage this time. Don't often see that one, but does have a lot of loyalty, unfortunately. Swing in at us with the Dragon again. No point in holding it back, thanks to the Fear. And then untapping their stuff with the Nissa Plus, so that goes straight up to 7 loyalty. And there we see another Rat Colony. I decide to hold off on playing that until the second main for some reason. Make a few mistakes here, like I said I'm still learning the deck. Could have had a plus 1 buff on the Rat Colony. So could have had Nissa at 1 loyalty as opposed to 2, I don't think it really matters. Play at the Rat Colony, drain our opponent again. That does chip away at our opponent over the course of the game. I haven't kept track of how much damage it's dealt, but I think it's at least around the 5 mark. In fact, thinking about the end of the game, I think it's much more than that. 
Uh, they have Cabal Coffers making a bunch of black mana. I think they just, yeah, they just untapped the Cabal Coffers with the Nissa. So now playing out the Lord Wingrace. Discarding a land and draws them up to five cards in hand. Still floating some black mana. Then searching for any land in their deck with a Sylvan Scrying. That was an Urborg Tomb of Yorgmoth, which obviously goes very well with Cabal Coffers, so playing that out straight away. And then just passing straight through to us, we get into a hell of a top deck in Skull Clamp. This is mistake number three, or whatever number we're on here. Didn't play particularly well this game. I decide to go for the Skull Clamp now, because I'm not thinking of attacking him with the Rat Colonies. I'm just thinking of drawing cards, and what I should do here... Is swinging with the rat colonies deal with a planeswalker or two. They've also got down the Valky, so fear is much more difficult now because they can block. But anyway, point being that I tap down the mana vault to make use of colorless mana, and uh, probably shouldn't have done. Should have waited until after the uh, combat phase. So I just decide to make at least a little bit of use out of the skull clamp and put it on the marrow Nora. Which means we can't swing in with it because the Valky has two power. So yeah, completely screw that part of the turn up. Turn in it sideways with the two rat colonies anyway. And Nissa's going to go down here. In response to blocks, we leave the Valky in play and make a couple of rat tokens. So it could have been much worse. We can still make use of the Skull Clamp. Because I don't think there's anything in the deck that buffs the toughness on these rats. Which is by design for Skull Clamp. So getting to a land and an Acroma's Memorial. Going to clamp another rat and just get into lands. That's what I said at the beginning of the game. We don't have any trouble getting into lands in this deck. So now seeing a one mana rat colony. And then I think I decide to Demonic Tutor here. Yeah, casting the Demonic Tutor completely tapping out. And it is the Bolus's Citadel that I plump for. There's every chance that we get into a couple of lands off the top if we're really unlucky, but we could also run away with the game if we're not particularly unlucky, so Bolas's Citadel next turn is what we're aiming for. Kamal Coffers taps for even more mana now, they have floated seven. Discarding a Chandra Flame Caller, Planeswalker, four cards in hand. And then getting down a Tevish Sat Doom of Fools, and this is where I'm thinking that the game's pretty much over here. Couple of Thrall Tokens into play off the Tevish Sat, followed by a Chandra Awakening. A minus from the Chandra kills off our commander, I decide to put that into the command zone. And then they whack us for four with the dragon again. So we're still at a half decent life total, I think we've got a turn or two here, but it's not looking hopeful for us, obviously. Drawing to Plumb the Forbidden, which is maybe a little bit too late. So now not playing a land and going for Bolas's Citadel because I guarantee that <laughs> there will be a land on top and there is straight away. So then it is Rat Colony. Pontu's Monument doesn't count there so it is still two that were drained for off the Bolas's Citadel. Obviously gain one back straight away though. I think I was considering a Plum the Forbidden there but decide on a Skull Clamp to clear the land off the top. And draw into two lands and reveal a Strip Mine on the top so... Yeah, really not looking good for us, like I keep saying. But as ever, the mantra of this channel is that you don't give up. They discard a Terramorphic Expanse to the Lord Wingrace, so that is now in limit break range. Tevesh Sat sacrifices a Thrall here. Yeah, sacrifices a Thrall and draws some cards. Chandra plussing and giving us an emblem, so that'll deal a damage to us during our upkeep. Casting a Crop Rotation, sacrifice a land, and that is upgraded to a Valor Cut. Uh, they've only got two mountains available to them, but there's plenty of ways of giving all your lands every basic land type. And then casting an Ugin. I'd be much more scared of an Ugin. I initially was scared of Ugin, because that could have got rid of the Bolas's Citadel. But in doing so, they would have wiped out all their Planeswalkers as well. So instead, just deciding to swing in with both their creatures. And then they plus and get rid of the Rat Colony here, I think. Yeah, blowing up the Rat Colony. So it's now or never basically, we get one damage dealt to us from the Mana Vault, one damage dealt to us from the Chandra, which obviously isn't good when you're looking to dump a bunch of life into the top of your library. But thankfully we've got, I think it's about 30 Rat Colonies in this deck, so we're quite likely to draw into them, and we do get into a pocket of them off the top here. 
So we'll go down to 10, play a land off the top, and there we see the game changer. Going down to 5 life, a coat of arms revealing another rat colony. And that takes us down to 4, can't play the species specialist here. The skull clamp isn't of any use to us, could use the plum the forbidden as a sack outlet. But I'm just working out here whether we've actually got our opponent or not, and and assuming that they can't do anything about this, then we do. Play the Acromas Memorial, that is a bunch of evasion, protection from black and red, which is relevant with their creatures, and it is four rounds of eight damage in the air, which is just enough to kill them. They go down to minus five, and had some pretty lucky top decks there, but had a lot of unlucky top decks as well, so thought that was a fun game, like I said. I'll take you through to a game with some live commentary in it now. Maro Nora versus Yarrick this time. And a Wallander, unfortunately. That's a good hand, but... Yeah, multiple lands is a lot better, so we'll keep that one. No turn one play from either of us. We draw into a swamp, so get down a rat colony. And yeah, don't have any trouble getting into lands in this deck. Throw down the rat colony again, swing in for three. Unmarked grave from Yarrick. And dumping in the bin with that, a Titan of Industry. Another rat colony for us, so... Uh, yeah, let's go Thousand Year Elixir here, because we can afford the Marrow Nora next turn. Rat colonies are three power apiece now, so that is six damage on our opponent. Necromancy brings this thing back now. So, uh, potentially going to blow up our Thousand Year Elixir. Uh, Alright, shield counter on this thing. And a Rhino Warrior token, so we really want to be getting fear on our stuff now. Another land for us. So now have fear on all of our stuff, and we can... Turning sideways with these, now four power creatures, eight damage on our opponent, aggroing them quite nicely here. And we've still got Maro Nora's ability held up thanks to the Thousand Year Elixir. Yarrick the Desecrated into play here. Thankfully only seeing the Titan of Industry after Yarrick hit play. They'll whack us back, that is seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven damage. I uh, could chump block here, that has trample. That is a vanilla creature though. It will take the damage, try and outrace them. So we get whacked down to 29. Let's get out both of our rat colonies now. So we could sacrifice a rat colony now. That would make us four rat tokens. And then make even more rats and really out aggro them. I think that's alright here. Let's sacrifice a rat colony. So uh, these now getting bumped up to nine ones. Untap our Marrow Nora. And then we can sacrifice a rat token because they're much less valuable to us than the colonies. And there we go, bumping them up to 15 ones, and they're going to be forced to block with their Yarrick here. So just decided to scoop it up at that. Maybe could have top decked into a board wipe, so maybe should have played that out there. Because we are weak to a board wipe here, draw, yeah, what do you know, into a land again next turn. So that was a fun couple of games to start off this Maro Nora 1v1 career. If you want to see the deck list, then it is in the description as always. Massive thank you to the patrons for consistently supporting the channel. You can find the link to that in the description as well. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.